When you're a musician, you've had this tool for maybe decades. And you know this tool. You know what it can do, and you've practiced and practiced, and so in the moment, you can just do. There's this flow state where you're just, you're really in the thing. And you think, wow. Producing music, now that a lot of times, you're not quite in that same kind of flow state. What's frustrating about music production software is it's written by gearheads for gearheads. I have a PhD in computer science, years of experience as a software developer, multiple patents in audio signal processing. You hand me Pro Tools and I get lost. Is that really true or are you just kidding? I, it is really true. I am not kidding you. And we're working to turn that completely on its head and make really simple, really intuitive interfaces. That's Reverbalize, where we've gotten lots of people on the web. Each one listens to a reverberation effect and gives us a word description. We do this with thousands of people, and it gives us a word cloud. You can click on a word like underwater. It's gonna change my sound. It's not really what it, it would sound like if it were underwater. It's what everyone thinks underwater would sound like, which is, in essence, my artistic goal if I wanna achieve that. And so that, that puts me back in the flow. I type it, I get it, I move on. Nobody wants to make their audio production tool impossible for someone else to use. No one sets out with that as their goal. But if you are a software developer, it's actually a little bit hard to get out of your head and realize that a uh, classical clarinetist is utterly mystified by all of the things you find very, very simple. One of the fundamental differences with our software and how it works is we are actually crowdsourcing interfaces. We don't start with a model that says, everyone thinks like me. We start with a model that says, I'm building a tool that is gonna learn the right way to be based on how it interacts with whoever it is who ends up using it. With Social EQ, we say, what do you want? And you say, I want to make the sound brighter. It gives you an EQ effect and says, what do you think of that? And you move it over to the right if you think it's brighter, and you move it over to the left if you think it's less bright. And it gives you another one. And after seven or eight questions, it goes, I think I know what you mean. And it hands you an equalization. And if you like it, you're done. If you don't like it, you can keep teaching it without ever having to understand the underlying signal processing. When audio production software was first made, well, the average person didn't think they were gonna be a recording engineer. So the first market was professional recording engineers who had these huge sound boards with all sorts of knobs and dials and things, and they have dedicated their lives to learning the ins and outs of this stuff. So what happened? They made the first audio software look as much like the thing with lots of knobs and dials and levers as possible. We're at the forefront of a sea change that says, why is it like that? There are many, many people in the world who are really great musicians who don't naturally gravitate towards electronics and knobs and dials. All of these tools, they're blocking our music culture. People who could have and would have produced stuff that was great, don't. They see the tool, it's too much, they give up. We want to make tools that they see the tool and they go, oh, I can do this, and they do. 
and then great stuff is made. Thank you.